Good morning, folks. This is Naima, sub chief market analyst at Evertrade. Welcome to our daily fundamental video analysis. Let's begin by looking at the equity price action. When we look at the three major US indices over in the United States, the S&P, the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones, we know that it was the Nasdaq index which has been the strongest index among the other two indices, right? As shown in the chart, the upward momentum for the Nasdaq index has started to ease off to some extent. Now, the question is, if the momentum is fading for the Nasdaq index, what could be next for the, for the other two indices? Because remember, the, it is the Dow Jones index which has been the weakest index among the other two indices. The other two indices being the S&P, again the Nasdaq, right? Now, if the Nasdaq index is, is lagging its upward momentum or that momentum has started to ease off. Surely it means more weakness for the index such as the, the, the Dow Jones index and of course the S&P 500 index. But let's shift gears and then focus on the fundamentals which really matter for today. And it is all about the ECB call and the discussion about junk rated bonds because Italy being the third biggest economy in the world there is a massive spike in terms of the junk bonds now of course investors want the ECB to come in and rescue the country the only way for them to rescue the country is perhaps start buying the junk bonds which the Federal Reserve has already done that and I'm speaking of a high yield market over here where the Fed has for the first time going to start to buy those ETFs which are pretty much dominated with high yield or the so-called the junk bonds. Now, investors are hoping that the European Central Bank is also going to take, do the same, or perhaps it is going to take those toxic assets off the balance sheets of the, these major banks so that they don't have to worry about these toxic asset, uh, assets, right? So that is the primary focus when it comes to the Eurozone, the SOC 600, the FTSE, the CAC 40, and the other European indices as well. So if the ECB steps into this position, if it steps into this area and then says that, okay, look, we're gonna start buying the junk bonds, then of course, great, we could see some surge with respect to the European indices as well, which by the way, are trading to the upside today because of what happened over on Wall Street last night in after our session, and I'm speaking about good earnings, from the stars to the like of Netflix. And by the way, we've done a full technical analysis on Netflix on our YouTube channel under Avatrade.com. So you can always check that, right? Now, going back to the other major uh, issues, and over here, the prominent one is gold. Now, remember, Bank of America has announced that precious metal is the most safest as asset and we all know that anyway because precious metal gold being it it is the most safest asset uh when it comes to that risk aversion or risk off or risk on trade right but the bank thinks that the the the, the asset or the, the precious metal does have it has the ability to go all the way to three thousand now remember Gold is trading, as you can see on the chart, in around 1600 to 1692 to 1680 for the last few days. I think that it is highly likely a gold price to continue its momentum to the upside and we can touch the 2000 mark very soon. How soon? Well, it really depends on the economic situation, it really depends on the economic, the, the Q2 numbers uh, in terms with respect to the earnings and also depend on the uh, economic data as well, which by the way, isn't expected to produce any good numbers anyway. Now, for the final part, it, it, remember, the spread was huge between crude oil and Brent. Now that spread has started to narrow because as of today, we've seen a massive sell-off in the Brent prices as well. And they've, blocked, they've, they've gone all the way to $17. As you can see in the chart, Brent was holding its uh, level above 20, but now the massive sell-off has triggered in Brent prices as well. What is the silver lining there? The silver lining is that with Brent prices being so lower, the chatter is going to increase with respect to another production cut from OPEC Plus. And if any of that becomes a reality, then we could see some surge in the, in the prices for, for oil prices across, across the globe. And I, with that, I mean also Brent and crude as well. That's all for today. Remember, you can always protect your upside and downside position by using Emma Patel. Stay safe, stay home. 
speak to you guys tomorrow.